Now, each year, around 9,000 people go missing in Ireland. Uh, 20 of them are never found. So what hopes do the families of these people have of ever finding their loved ones? Crime journalist Paul Williams has been investigating these cases for years, and we we're also joined by Bob Shannon, who is still looking for his son, Angus. Gentlemen, you're very welcome well, to very the welcome. show. Thanks, Paul, please. if I can just start with you, what do we know about Ireland's missing? <clears throat> Well, we know that's what your stats are there, uh -huh. how many people go missing every year, how many people are found, how many people remain missing. There, there are basically, I suppose, about three loose categories. Mm -hmm. One are people, one is, uh, is the people who go off, take their own lives. Mm -hmm. uh, two, there are people who f have accidents mm -hmm. and their bodies are concealed by uh -huh. nature or whatever, or sw washed away. And third is the one that upsets, they're all terribly upsetting, mm -hmm. but the most upsetting of all is where you think there has been a sinister dimension to it. Somebody has deliberately taken away your loved one, uh, murdered them and concealed their body and is carrying that secret. And the longer it goes on, and in fact, of all the victims of crime I've met through the years, you know, I've met rape victims, I've met murder victims, maybe people whose families were, you know, murdered, mm -hmm. uh, stabbed, attacked, crippled. Mm. And it's the, f it's the, and I know Bob's going to talk about it. it yeah. I've met so many people who have, they died uh, broken hearted looking after loves. I, one person that come to mind, Jock Corbley was a guy I used to know, he was a criminal in Dublin. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, a fellow called PJ Judge took him away yeah. and gave him the most horrendous murder, a, a horrendous death. Uh, and I remember his mum, I used to go to see her quite a lot. And she died of a broken heart. The most, the most lovely God-fearing woman you ever, you ever met. Mm -hmm. And Judge took her away, like everybody knew what, who was involved. And the people who, he, he took away the body from a group of criminals mm -hmm. and buried it and never told anyone who it was. Um, and all these cases are, I don't think there is any co comparable sort of heartache. There or, isn't, no, mm -hmm. no, without answers. Now, um, your son, Angus, yes. disappeared. Um, what age was he? Uh, 20 years of age. Yeah, 20. And, and this is and the year 2000, is it? The year 2000, yeah. T tell us what happened. Um, he was going to a disco. Um, he was working in jail. And uh, he came back in the bus and he, he came into the, I was working in the bank and he came in. He, he, he took out 100 euros in the machine and he came in 40 euros. He owed you, is it? He, yeah. he, he used to borrow during the week and he would give me back the 40 euros. And he would, I was busy and there was somebody with him. So he looked in and then he, when he came to give me the money, he was joking. He says, well, if they all knew out there what uh, you would... Because you were the bank manager, <laughs> yeah, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah if, they, if they knew that I was paying you back. And I said, yeah, they should charge you more interest. You know, so. yeah. Yeah. But, uh, there it, actually is footage, isn't there, of your son coming into the bank that day. I think we have, yeah. I think we mm -hmm. have this uh, CCTV footage of your mm -hmm. son and this is this is the last time that he the, ha he was seen and, and this is again yeah, this is the coat as well like he was wearing oh, you know yeah. like a son so which is you know you couldn't miss it that this is the last time you saw your and, son yes yeah yeah. Uh, yeah was he spotted in cctv after then coming out of a pub later on that night and uh, he was yeah, yeah. He, there was an, well there was another uh, ctv uh, that's him there coming out yeah. of the pub and, and uh, he came out. This is in Limerick, of course. Yes. And Limerick, and he went to. Uh, he met two pal the pals, and they, they, they were actually. He asked. He said he was staying out that night, mm -hmm. and uh, that he was going to stay with his pals. But he was going to. He was going to a video uh, a disco, and mm -hmm. and um, and uh, so. But he was with pals, and they left about nine o'clock, and. Um, he said, and he was one of these sociable guys. He spoke to everybody, you know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he stayed there, and then he rang somebody. Uh, at about 20 past 10, he rang one guy and he wasn't there, there was no answer, and he ran the second, we checked this out, and the, you know, he ran the second guy, and the guy was, uh, the following morning he was going, and, you know, working early. Oh. So he said, they see him later on, the, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, he left then, uh, and then there was another sighting, or there was uh, talks of a sighting, with, or there was a witness that came forward, or that was spoken to at the time, a young woman who had seen him walk into somebody's door and about no, to ring yeah, the doorbell yeah. and she, then left, was that she, right? She, she actually parked, she was in the university. Yeah. And she was actually parked the car, car and she was waiting for the parking space for, for uh, Saturday morning so she wouldn't get a ticket. Yeah. So she, and she was parking so she actually spotted him and he actually came out and he was walking mm -hmm. across the road and he was just went to the house to knock 
He had a bottle of bud in the hand, so he changed his mind and he put the bottle of bud down and he, and he walked up that lane. She was the last person to see him. To see him. And no. nothing after that? They the Shannon and everything? The, oh, yeah, there, there was constant searches, you know, yeah. and... and uh, nothing? We sent out posters everywhere, you know, as, uh, as um, posters, and also then um, Father Aquinas would be Nancy's nephew. Is, uh, he set up the, the website. You know, there was no... There was, uh, the Wasn't there a few phone calls, though, a number of years ago? There was, uh, as there was, um, we got, I got a phone call about, say, say about eight years ago, and uh, it said, by the way, uh, my, this is a broken phone, so he won't be able to trace it. Yeah. And uh, I said, okay, but it was because I was getting to like, you know, but uh, what the did the person say? He just said that, um, uh, that um, he was thrown over a wall. Okay. You know, uh, this the, is just talking totally over the blue. Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were driving well, the car there, the there, there were loads of appeal. There was a lot of appeals to see, yeah. and this, this came from one of them. So uh, I asked him to, would he ring me back? You know, because it, it was crackling and going, yes. I couldn't yeah. get. It. So he rang me back, and, and I was in the car driving, and there were two, there were two of them fighting over space, and you know, here when I was getting this phone call, and that was broken as well. So I asked him, to, I pleaded him to come back, but they never came back. Obviously, this man has some kind of conscience. If you rang it the first time, and then if you asked him to call mm. back, and he did, obviously mm. there was something. Well, uh, yeah, he knows that he, he, they're definitely people. I believe that they know. Yeah. They know. And Paul, this something. is the case in an awful lot of these missing persons cases. There are people who have information. There are people. There are two types of people who will who will abduct people and take them away. They're, they're called serial killers, and they're called maybe people who are known to them. But in nine times out of ten, if somebody is taken away and they're murdered and one person operates on their own or they're a cl clinical, quintessential uh, psychopath, then they won't tell anybody. But always somebody shares mm. information with somebody else. Mm. Like with Kira Breen, it just comes into mind if Dun in Dundalk. Now, her killer was known and suspected mm -hmm. for many years. He died recently uh, of natural causes. Um, and the Gardaí come forward and they say, look, appeal to people, said, we know that people know about this. We know you may have been kids, impressionable, easily scared kids, 16 years of age, 15 years of age, when she went missing, Kira went, you know, come to us now, you're more mature, you have kids, your own, you have world, world life experience. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of cases, like for example, Fiona Pender, um, uh, Fiona Sennett in Limerick, or sorry, in Wexford, uh, there are suspects in those cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then there are cases like like well, Bob's case, Angus. like Angus. You know, uh, Angus, and, and, and they, nobody knows anything. And yeah. sometimes you also have to be very conscious yeah. and careful about the fact that some headbanger can pick up the phone and ring you just to try and break yeah, hard. Or people actually get kicks out of yeah. things like that as what, well. What do you mm -hmm. believe, Bob? I mean, he would be what now, about 37, what if he was, he if he was now, here yeah, with us? Yeah. Do you yeah. believe he's still alive? Um, I don't. I think he's dead. You know, like, and he's, uh, we were always hoping, appealing to get the. Mm -hmm. We were never looking for justice. All we wanted to do was get a body to, you know. Yeah. And his mother died of a broken heart. Mm -hmm. This you was know, Nancy's a lovely yeah. photo of Nancy last year, here. Yeah. yeah. She died of a broken heart. Broken heart. Yeah. Last last, uh, last year, you know. So, uh, she was very close to him. Yeah, yeah. 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 He was the youngest, and uh, he was the one that she, she was kind the of fair boy. Fair. Well, he, he he was Alexia, and yeah. she was a teacher, and yeah. uh, he. He was the one that she needed to help, and you know, the two of them were great buddies. Yeah. You know, so, so, so you'd you know, be so. saying to here on the show now, I know it's a long time ago, there were appeals, there was that anonymous phone call, you don't know mm. whether or not it mm. was uh, above board or whatever, but mm. what would you say to people watching if they have information? Well, I would say that to, to at least get, let us spread, you know, give us information where the body is. I definitely know that people know, not to be afraid. We like we we are not looking for uh, you know retribution. We, we, retribution. We, the last thing I want to do is went to court and find something to give me the two fingers after. Yeah. You know, all I want is the body, and he can bury it with his mother. Yeah. You said you know, the skeleton of the body, so yeah. he can lay to rest with, yeah, with his, his, own his mother. mother. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that'd be her wish. You know. So, so you know. That's, um, yeah. Well, yeah. well that's I'm just, hoping, Paul. I mean, like shows like this can help people come forward it's amazing they? somebody could be just watching and just it just changes yeah. everything and you know it's it is absolutely heartbreaking i like we've all got families mm -hmm. yeah it's mm -hmm. just to try and get your head around and absorb the thought of your one of your kids a, a, your 20 year old child mm -hmm. you never see them again they vanish off the face of the earth and you mm -hmm. don't have any there answers. is no closure yeah. and no. you don't have a place to go to grieve there's no there's no headstone there that you can go no. to on his birthday or Christmas, no. 
where you can go there and actually uh, talk to them. His grandchildren, like he's, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a nephews and nieces he's now. He's an uncle, there was, yeah. And there was three marriages, you know, like in the yeah. family. Mm -hmm. And he was missing for those. And, and one guy who enjoyed the crack was him. He was a sourceman. The guy. Yeah. He, that was his problem. He was two sourceman. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. An old friend of mine said, an old friend, a cop from Kerry, and it's mm -hmm. poor comfort to, uh, yeah. to, to you, Bob. We were talking about him earlier on, but... Um, you know, he says that the bones of the dead cry out for justice, mm -hmm. and you have to believe that. Think of Elaine O'Hara, what happened mm -hmm. to her. She disappeared. It was a classical, again, textbook suicide. She was mm -hmm. gone. Yeah. She had issues. She disappears. Then this extraordinary uh, number of events juxtaposed to each other, dovetail into each mm -hmm. other, and you see this picture emerging, and we get this cold-hearted, psychopathic killer who mm -hmm. told nobody. And it's electronics and good detective work mm -hmm. and nature that gives up that case. Yeah, yeah. And, and her these can, is in jail can so now, point being, and that's it. The net point is mm. they can be caught. They can, and they yeah. can but be back to, justice. Back can to that be hospital, found. I should say. Mm. Back to that. Can I just talk to you, Bob, about the Gordy and the missing persons unit and all that in the sense of the the, the um the help you've had along the way. Are you happy that, that in, enough investigations have been, well, have been done into in your in the, in missing? The, in the year 2000, we were very backward in, in that way, is that people, it was kind of left to the family, suicide and missing. Nobody kind of mentioned the family, kind of okay. looked after it. Yeah. And we pushed it out there as far as we could. Every politician, everybody, we kept fighting. Mm -hmm. You know, and Aquinas said with the website, it was only, there was a guy on the website and there were only six people on it. You know, when, when that's set up, yeah. you know, now the things have changed. The, in, in England, the, uh, we, I was over there, we were all over the, you know, different places. In England, they had a, a special unit, a guard, where you went down, you, the policeman, you met him there, they, you know, they helped you out. The yeah. uh, Salvation Army was the best. But the same thing with the media now. That time, the media, I was told to, uh, by RTE mm -hmm. and, uh, and the RTE that, that, that it wasn't news. Okay. Yes, I mean, genuinely. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference. It has changed completely. Yeah. Un un unfortunately, I'd say now that probably gets too much publicity, so it's kind of the thing yeah. to do. But you have to put uh, you know, the spotlight, spotlight yeah. as Paul was saying Absolutely. there. You know, you can't, now and again, they have to oh, put the spotlight mm -hmm. back on I understand on cases. that. I understand yeah. that. I understand mm -hmm. that. You know, but, uh, is, uh, but the things have. Uh, but the other thing I would say that, uh, you know, I look, is there's a whole lot of cases, and if anything comes out of even one person, yeah, comes out from forward. this this show we have yeah. achieved something you know so that yeah. and people know mm -hmm. so that, and I appeal, I appeal to him first of all for naturally for myself yeah. but for all the other people because we'd know him well Nancy was right to all she right. was you know so, thank you so much okay. for coming in Paul, thank Paul. you very much Paul thank great you. to have you on the show as well if you have any information you think that could help to find Angus or any other of Ireland's missing people contact your local guard station there is also a national missing persons helpline and that is 1890 442 552